Inside this box is a whopping 60 terabytes of hard disk space that I'm gonna be putting in this. A machine I will be calling Overkill because that's what it is. I have a few problems with my current network storage solutions, namely the speed that I can access and transfer data, the lack of rendering power on the server, and uh, dubious levels of redundancy. See, my current NAS, or my, my primary NAS, is an old QNAP one that I reviewed a long while ago, and has four 8 terabyte drives. Two of which are Seagate Ironwolf Pros, which is good, but then the other two, one of them is a Toshiba N300, and the other one is a Seagate Archive Drive, which is an SMR shingled magnetic recording drive. And they're all running in what's essentially RAID 5. So I do have some level of redundancy. If one drive fails, I can put in another one, have it rebuild the array, and in theory, I shouldn't lose any data. Although in practice, rebuilding RAID arrays can cause other drives to fail as well. So let's just say I'm walking on thin ice with that. It's also a gigabit NAS. Technically speaking, it does have two gigabit ports, which I do have set up in port trunking. So technically it's two gig, but my PC doesn't run two gig, nor does any of the equipment that stands between it and my PC. And I've had some, I guess, network instability. So it often starts running at 100 meg instead of one gig, which, well, let's just say for trying to, you know, copy or render out 4K footage uh, while pulling from the NAS, doesn't quite work out so well. And like I said, the, the QNAP NAS is running something like an Intel Atom, like it's that old, I think it might be quad or maybe eight core, but either way, it's incredibly low powered, which is fine for running Plex off it, which I also do, but it's not the sort of machine that I can be rendering out my video projects on remotely or have them, you know, just push to the NAS, have it render that, and then I can, you know, go away and do other stuff. So, uh, to solve all of those problems and because of not quite a space limitation just yet, I still do have enough space on that array for now, but for room to grow, especially now I'm running two channels, I thought that this would be a pretty good time to, well, do a bit of an overkill upgrade. So I went and bought all of these drives. These are WD 10 terabyte golds and I have six of them, meaning a total of 60 terabytes of raw capacity. Once that gets formatted and because I'm using two of them as parity drives, meaning I can sustain two drive failures simultaneously and should still not lose any data, uh, that means I'll have probably about 35 to 38-ish terabytes of usable space which is still a handsome upgrade to the 20 or so terabytes I have available right now. You might be looking at this desktop PC case, it's the Fantex N2 Evolve X, my favorite case of all time, and wondering why this is sitting here. Well, the answer is that in my current place of living and I suppose current place of work, I don't have space or the, the possibility of using a rack mount server. Uh, when I eventually move or get an office, this will be, you know, transplanted into a rack mount server with a lot more room for more drives. But for the time being, it's going in this case because one, it is the biggest case that I have to fit as many drives as possible. I also have all of the drive cages I need to fit all six of these drives in this case. And there's actually room for, I think it's like four more. So that's good, more room for expansion. And it's also the only case that fits the motherboard I want to use in it. Now, what motherboard I hear you ask? Well, the answer is the one that fits one of these. This is a Threadripper 2970WX, and I'm gonna be using this in the build. Now, you might be thinking, why? And the answer to that is pretty simple. I wanna use this as both a NAS and a sort of rendering server. The idea here is that because I'm using Unraid, it's very easy to run virtual machines. So I'll partition four cores of the 24 that this has to Unraid so that it can handle all of my storage needs. And then I'll have the other 20 cores uh, partitioned to a Windows VM, as well as the graphics card I'm gonna put in it for acceleration. And then I can have it be rendering my videos, transcoding footage, so that I, I can take that load off of my main PC. I can carry on using it however I like, while this renders all of my projects and videos in the background. Plus, I would also like to be able to edit directly from this rather than having any footage stored on my PC. It makes things a lot simpler. I already use a lot of effectively old footage in some of the videos. Uh, when I'm talking about something that I've already re reviewed, I can put the footage of that item 
up on screen. Uh, but that footage is stored on my NAS, and so rendering that footage can be a little slow. So if I just have it all on the NAS, makes that way easier. Also makes it way easier for rendering projects on this as well if all of the footage is essentially in the same place. So to aid with that, I'm gonna be using a one terabyte NVMe SSD for a cache drive, and that should aid in sort of the snappiness and responsiveness, but also these drives themselves should do a reasonable enough job, but still providing a good experience. I will also have a cache drive uh, for like an Adobe cache on my system to store cache files there. And I'll be using a 10 gigabit ethernet connection uh, between this and my PC. So that's the explanation of why I'm using a 24 core Threadripper in a NAS. Uh, let's get to building it. I actually need to swap out the CPU as it's currently using the 16 core 2950. I'm sure that, that would be fine, but if I've got a 24 core, I may as well use it, right? So let's swap that out, drop the drives in, grab its card, and then get Unraid installed. So as you can tell by the fact that I'm probably wearing a different t-shirt, my beard is a fair bit longer and my hair is probably quite different, it's been a little while since I filmed that first part. It's actually been about a month uh, since I actually put it together, as I've spent about a week just putting all of my data onto it. Then I spent another couple of weeks actually using it, trying to get everything set up right. And so this is the uh, the look over the, the, the finished version, the, the built version that is now in use and hence why it's not sitting here next to me. So how I have it set up now, I have the Netgear, I think it's, it used to be called SX10, now it's something different. I'll put up a shot of it on screen so that you can see it, but essentially that is a two port 10 gigabit managed switch that I'm using as a, an interim between the NAS, which has the 10 gig card that came with the Asus Zenith Extreme motherboard and uh, my PC which now has the Asus XG C100C, a very nice, actually very budget 10 gig ethernet card that you can just drop into your PC and as long as you have uh, you know, other 10 gig devices is very useful. In terms of how I have it set up in Unraid, well, that one is even easier. A quick note on Unraid, by the way, this is my first time using it and it's insanely simple to, to get started and to do pretty much anything on. For example, when setting up the array, all you have to do is go to the 
main page and then pick which drives you want to be your parity drives and which drives you want to be your sort of data drives in the array. Once you do that, you can also add any cache drives you want. In my case, the M.2 SSD, the, the one terabyte drive that's in there. And then you click start, it does a parity sync and you're up and running. You can then go to the shares page create a shared folder, maybe some user accounts so you want a bit of security in there, and share it, connect to it from your Windows, Mac, Linux, PC, whatever, and you're, you're done. If you want to install Plex, you can do that uh, in a Docker container with a couple of clicks, especially using the Community Applications plugin, which is fantastic, by the way. There's also the Unassigned Devices plugin, which is also great. Uh, and uh, even if you want to create a VM, which I have, it's a couple of clicks as well. The one thing that I don't technically currently have working to the fullest extent is having that the system or the VM render my videos for me uh, automatically. I can remote desktop into it, open the project up in Premiere and then export it to After Effects after manually locating the, the missing media, even though it's all on the same drive. Uh, but right now I can't just cut from my PC, copy the uh, project folder to the, the, the watch folder essentially in Premiere and have it auto do everything for me. There's still a, a bit of work in between and so that's something that I'm, I'm still working on. But if I want to have it render footage in the background for me uh, or just render this sort of footage that you're, you're seeing now down to 30 megabit per second which is what I normally do anyway, that works just fine. I think the next purchase that I will make towards the this NAS adventure is probably a UPS. I don't have a regular or basically any level of power stability or you know surge issues. That's not something that I get here. Power is generally pretty stable in Britain as a whole and my area seems to do pretty well too. But it's definitely good practice because inevitably there will be some issue that causes a power outage or a surge or something and I don't want to be losing data for the sake of not buying a, in the grand scheme of things, relatively inexpensive you know, box. So that's probably going to be my next purchase. As for my final sort of notes on Unraid, there are a couple of things that I want to just mention for if anyone who's you know planning on building their own NAS using Unraid. Like I said, it's ridiculously simple to get started and the, the file system and the way that they handle the different drives is definitely unique. Uh, it means that you can basically use any size drives in any configuration you like, which I know a lot of people do, especially for running like you know, Plex servers, where if you happen to lose all your media, it's not like the absolute end of the world. Like it'd be annoying as all hell, but it's not like uh, what I'm doing, which is you know storing my uh, production media essentially, and so that would be a bit more of a problem if I if I lose that. But the way that they do it is instead of, for example, with ZFS, when you store a relatively large file, technically speaking, that parts of that file could be stored across all of the drives that aren't parity disks in your array. Whereas in Unraid, it generally stores whole files on single disks. And it actually lets you see which files are on which disk in the array in the, the web interface. That's something that I'm still sort of, I guess, trying to wrap my head around as a, a, a concept. And so I still feel a touch uncomfortable with it, although I'm not entirely sure why. And also on the cache side of things, while I do have that one terabyte NVMe SSD in there, it acts as, or at least it seems to, act as a sort of write-only cache. So if you're writing data to the NAS, it will store it all on the NVMe SSD, meaning you can write at the, the full speed of either the drive or your network. Uh, and then it doesn't move that data off the drive automatically. It doesn't act like a buffer where it's still copying to the array, but it can fill up the drive and you know slowly fill the array at whatever speed your disks can handle. Instead, it acts as an intermediary step where it, if you write to the, the NAS, it will store that. And then either when you run the mover manually or uh, via the schedule, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, I think, um, it will then move all of that data off of the SSD and into the array. The problem with that is that when you're copying or when you're writing data to it, if it, when it lands on the SSD, it doesn't then also write it to the array until you press move or have the mover run. 
What that means is that if you're writing data, and in my case, in theory, I could write up to about a terabyte of data, and that would be entirely unprotected until the mover moves it to the, the protected uh, array itself. What I was hoping for was more of a sort of read-write cache where when you're, uh, basically that sort of normal cache, if you, you think of it as a, when you access files regularly, those files get stored on the SSD and when you're writing acts as a buffer for the NAS so uh, for the array so that as you're writing lots of data the SSD can hold all of that for a short period of time and slowly write it out to the array uh, and again when you're accessing you know repeatedly accessed files those will get a copy stored on the SSD so that you can access those quickly as well. But it doesn't seem to do that. Now, like I said, I'm new to Unraid, so if there is a way to make that happen, please do let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very interested in trying to get that set up. Although for the time being, how I have it set up is the mover runs weekly. Uh, I only write about 100, maybe 200 gigs at most a week in terms of footage, and so I, I can basically keep all of the footage on the SSD for the general week that I'm going to be working on any one video. And then uh, once that video is done, generally at the end of the week, it will be moved to the array. I can still edit directly from the array anyway, it's still fast enough to do that, but it is just a touch snappier on the SSD and so that's how I have it set up right now. So there you have it, there's my, my new 60 terabytes or uh, 36 terabyte usable uh, NAS with uh, a NVMe SSD cache and a 24 core Threadripper with 16 of those as or 20 of those as a pass through. Um, so yeah, there you have it. I would love to hear your thoughts on this um, definitely overkill setup. If you have any suggestions on things that I should tweak in Unraid or hardware side, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I do know that I'm not using ECC memory right now, which is something that I'll also be upgrading to in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Um, there'll be links to the hard drives uh, and maybe a couple of the different parts that I've used in the description, as well as Unraid. That won't be an affiliate link, although the uh, links to the drives probably will be. Um, and yeah, that's kind of that. As usual, there are plenty of other links in the description down below, but I think if you've made it this far, you probably know that already, as well as, you know, videos and subscribing and stuff, so I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching, we'll see you all in the next video.